In just over two weeks, Donald Trump will find himself on trial in the only criminal case he has not been able to delay, his New York hush money case. Now, most defendants do not spend the weeks leading up to a trial targeting the judge. But after Judge Juan Marchand issued Trump a gag order in the case this week, Trump not only didn't dial it back, he ramped up the attacks. In at least four social media posts, Trump went after the judge and the judge's daughter, who is a Democratic political consultant. Judge Marchand's gag order restricts Trump from making public statements about witnesses, prosecutors, jurors, and court staff in the upcoming trial. But tonight we saw dueling motions in this case from Trump's legal team and from the Manhattan DA. Trump's team tonight argues his recent True Social posts do not run afoul of the gag order. Meanwhile, the Manhattan DA's office has asked the judge to clarify whether the judge's daughter is covered by the gag order and, if not, to expand its scope. Joining me now is Joyce Vance, MSNBC legal analyst and professor at the University of Alabama School of Law. Joyce, thanks for being here tonight. Um, do you have a, a sort of, do you have a position here on, on whether Judge Marchand actually should expand this and will expand this gag order? So, look, it's dicey. Judges typically don't protect themselves simply because they don't need the protection. Most good lawyers will insist that their clients behave, that they not, for instance, threaten the judge or a member of the judge's family. So this is a unique situation. But, Alex, the reality is that the judge will have to take action um, whether he wants to or not. And it's about more than protecting himself or his daughter. As the DA points out in their letter tonight, the real problem here is how this impacts potential jurors and potential witnesses, people who don't have abundant protection for their family. And when they see Donald Trump doing this to the judge's daughter, you know, I think we have to uh, accept the fact that they'll be frightened for themselves, frightened for their families, and it'll have serious spillover effects if the judge doesn't put an end to it now. Uh, well, you know, Joyce, and I, I absolutely concur, if you will, on the idea that this impacts witnesses and so forth. But, but, but judges have found themselves in the crosshairs in a way that they haven't been in a very long time. And I think for people who don't know, your own father-in-law was a judge on the 11th Circuit and was killed by a serial killer who sent a pipe bomb to his house. I mean, the, the, the threat of physical violence is, is one that is chilling in, in a way that you, I think, understand more than most. Can you talk a little bit about the effect this kind of thing has on the families of judges? You know, it's obviously something that you wouldn't wish on anyone. But I think judges and other public servants, prosecutors, except to some extent that there is a risk that someone who is filled with hate or, or in the grips of a mental health crisis will harm them or, or will harm their family. What you don't expect is that it will be the former commander in chief of the United States who will direct that sort of hate at you. And, and Donald Trump is out of excuses. He understands that his mob stood outside of the Capitol and chanted, hang Mike Pence, that they built a gallow. At this point in time, for Trump not to direct his followers that they must never use violence or to not dial back his rhetoric is tantamount to saying that he intends for people to go ahead and follow through when he targets someone. So yes, it's terrible when we have these incidents of violence. My family's personal history attests to that. What's even worse in this situation is that it's someone who shouldn't be doing this, who's undercutting. I saw Judge Ludig tonight, former Fourth Circuit judge, very conservative, tweeting, saying Donald Trump is destroying the rule of law in front of us, destroying the integrity of our criminal justice system. Someone needs to put a stop to it. It's long past time. Yeah, from Michael Ludig, that is. Those are words uh, with deep resonance. Joyce Vance, thank you for joining me tonight, Joyce. It's great to see you. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.